So when we think about the elements of a room and you're looking around inside, of course there's going to be a floor, there's going to be walls and doors, there's going to be windows and a, and a ceiling. So these are actual things that you have to create outside as well. <clears throat> so the, the, the shape of the floor is one thing that we'll be looking at to create a room. And also, what is the texture? What is the pattern on the ground that you're walking on? And I find outdoors, it's, it's really um, fun to see all the different kinds of textures and materials that you can use to create flooring. Here's an example of a large um, crusher cone fire pit. And in this case, it's, it's simply a, a concrete surface, but they've got radiating lines coming out of it, which adds some interest. But probably what makes this the most interesting is, is biting it into the hillside a little bit to create that sense of, of wall happening around part of the patio. So if we use our rule of significant enclosure, then just the wall alone is not going to be enough to, to make it feel just right. So what probably would work really well is to have some taller bushes in here that come up around the back of the patio. And these might be like, like dogwoods or big shrub roses or something like that. And as soon as we do that, you can see that now this becomes such an inviting space and, and I would be inclined to have some, some plants that, that would trail over the wall as well and, and um, just soften that edge. So if we take a look at, at this project, you can see that there is a barbecue over here and some railing going around. So this area feels enclosed as a room. When you use the glass railing, it doesn't feel as enclosed. And what happens in this space, however, is that because of the nature of these really wide stairs, there's almost like a wall is missing here. And you'll notice how the furniture is pushed back against the glass railing and against the house because this um, having furniture next to the stairs often feels really uncomfortable. So if I were going to take a look at, at fixing the, the roomness of this, I would probably even look at putting a little bit of a raised planter right in here and just take those, those stairs right off and have, have some planters going along here. Because really, we don't need to walk everywhere around the edge of our patio. So it could be that all we needed was stairs which come down straight down into the backyard. You could go here into the, this room area. And as soon as there's, there's this a little bit taller planting right here, then the furniture feels like it could start to move out. And um, then that whole area on the top becomes a, a room space. So when we look at creating walls, this is somebody's front lawn and it just had a straight sidewalk and some steps down to a really busy um, road area. So the addition of a low wall like this can just add something, um, a sense of, of containment to the front lawn. So it doesn't take a lot for you know somebody walking by here to feel like, oh, I... I would only go in onto that lawn if I was invited. Um, without these bushes, people would be possibly quite comfortable walking right across the front lawn. So that is one way to create a front yard room. And these are lilacs on either end, which will get larger over time and um, enhance that sense of separation from the street. So here it would be having some kind of some kind of wall space happening here. And depending on, like we, we've already discussed about how big this space is, is how high these bushes need to be. So it could be that you, you add an extra few trees if this lawn is, is quite a lot larger. I always look at, at arbors as doorways as well. And, and doorways are generally not 
just floating around on the lawn. They they usually have walls attached to them, and that's what makes them a doorway. So, so I'm a big fan of having taller stuff on either side of an arbor, and and maybe putting a vine or something on it, and it feels. Um, more like um, a wall and door system. <clears throat> so trampolines are really interesting because they have such a large presence in the garden. So I would be um, always looking for, can I tuck a trampoline right into a, another planting area or another uh, at the edge of another room that's going on? And when we see how the garden boxes relate to the to the shed back here, the these um, the shed in particular actually balances out the the trampoline a little bit, which helps it to kind of um, just feel like it fits better in the landscape. So again, if we're looking at how wide or how deep this space is, then having these taller trees at the back is in a better proportion and it will it will just get better as these trees get larger because right now this is almost the same the same distance here as here so those trees could definitely get larger for the um, enclosure ratio to work nicely now rooms don't always have to be um, so regimented that it's like uh, definitely eight foot walls and or six foot walls or whatever the ratio has to be sometimes we will have like sides of it that are open to lawn areas and it's really a sense of how does this space feel when you're sitting on it what are the views and the sight lines and is there some interest in it so having this bed right here really enhances the sense of this room without this bed the the lawn wouldn't have this sense of a river flowing through it. It would it would be a, more of a lake feeling, and I would I would even call this area right here uh, a room. We've got a bench and a tree and some bushes in behind it, and um and a bit of lawn space in front. So if we look at the actual size of the room, I would say, you know, it's kind of kind of like this. So it's not quite as big as this one, but. Um, it is its own space out there. And rooms can be found in unusual places. This was um, along a front sidewalk that was coming up to someone's front door and they had large spruce trees and a very rocky front garden. So what they did was they uh, enlarged the, the walkway to make it into a bit of a patio right here underneath the front window. So they have a bench and a little table and You'll notice the size of this patio is maybe eight feet or so, maybe eight or nine feet. And then the these planter pots are actually giving it that sense of significant enclosure. Like the whole space doesn't just drain away into rocks and spruce trees. It has a little sense of, of um, being contained. And <clears throat> I think it, it actually worked really well. Here is um, a drone picture of a two-story deck. So in this case, the, the door is exiting here onto the deck and there's room for furniture. Um, you can see they've got a box where the traffic flow would be, so that box really should live somewhere else. And they would go down the stairs to the lower level. So when we look at walls in this case, some of the deck has railing and some of the deck has some frosted glass panels. And this is something I will do quite a lot because of the tightness of our properties. It's nice to have some sound, wind, and, um, and sight lines kind of screened on, on those close areas. So I really like how, how this kind of made use of a, of a side yard that maybe wasn't uh, going to be well used. And what will happen when you do something a, a bit more creative like this is that your main windows looking out of this side of the house towards the view are not obstructed by a deck and, and railings. And then this, this side yard um, has a better function. So the only thing missing on this particular one, it, I would say, is a is a sense of ceiling. Um, as you can see, you can fly a drone over it and see everything. 
And rooms can be quite small as well. This is a bench with a, a pergola over top. And I think the reason this works so well, again, is, is because of the, the plants that are tucked around both sides and the fact that there's these tall trees at the back. So there's something about all these different heights and, and, and um, layerings that, that are going on here that makes this quite an awesome space. So walls don't have to be totally solid. They can be permeable like, like a lattice work type of thing. And when we have a larger property, having those big beams and pergolas uh, will give you some uh, a little bit of shade on a space, but they also add presence into the garden space. So without these wooden structures here, the the garden would flow, but it wouldn't necessarily necessarily have this sense of presence. And I think that this works super well in this case. And similarly on a deck, if the deck is really quite large and it will hold a dining room set and a living room set, what can work very nicely is to have a, a pergola structure over one of the spaces to um, create um, a sense that it's a different space altogether. And you can see how the height of this tree has a nice presence in that it's taller than the, the pergola itself. And here's another example of a garden room that's butted up right against the house. And these people obviously have a nice touch with wood and stone and they're, they're creating some textures and some handmade details. You can see there's lighting built into those beams going across so it will look really beautiful in the evening. And this simply has a tarp um, style uh, roof on it. So in the winter that tarp would come off if there's a snow load and it would... Um, work very well. Now here is an interesting project where the the rooms are really obvious. So in this side there is a hot tub. So it has walls, different heights of walls and a roof line over top. In in the adjacent deck area there is a table and chairs and obviously this was a really hot property so they were creating a lot of shade and what I like about structures is that you can hang baskets from them and it and it adds some some life and interest so this property if you could see it from the other view looks quite different when you see it from this side so this becomes like a threshold like a really large arbor doorway coming into that that very neat tidy deck space and this yard had a, a lot of interest. They, they had panels of screening with, I call this the Zen view, a little round window in there. And you can see how lovely this patio looks in the whole garden space. So overall, this area is quite large and that's why the size of this pergola works. So if it was just a small area of patio kind of tucked into here and the rest was lawn, it wouldn't have had the same effect. This, this structure that's pulled out into the garden really, um, really creates a nice um, pulling of your eye out into the rest of the landscape. And of course you can get roof lines that are even completely solid. And in this one, there is a solid roof. There's a, a heat lamp under here and a big harvest table and a bridge going. So it was like we were creating a, uh, a floating dining area in this one. And um, it had such a, a lovely experiential nature having, having the water flow all the way around the structure. And another example of a, of a solid roof would be this gazebo picture. And again, we have a little bridge and, and then, so there's a, this is, this is definitely a threshold. A, a bridge is, is um, a transition from the lawn into that space. And I always look at making sure that bridges don't have too steep of a deck. This one's not too bad. Sometimes if they're really steep, they're actually hard to walk on, but, um, 
this garden has really a lovely sense of depth to the plantings and the and the water feature wrapping around it as well that the gazebo just kind of like fits into the landscape in such a beautiful way and the thresholds can can look like this as well where you have um, the rear garage and the the house so the driveway can sometimes feel like it's right in your backyard so in this case they've they've added a screen of a certain height and and certain size of doorway that that connects everything and here's a the last picture is of um, a home that was building a more of a um, a Japanese style garden gate and it even has a roof over top of it so what happens is that this whole space starts to feel like its own room. When you have a structure that, that, that is that beautiful and that um, obvious, then it, it starts to need a bigger uh, container around it so that it feels like it fits in. So even just the two rocks and a few bushes will help it. If they weren't there, it would, it would feel a bit, a bit plain. So, um, so you can do a lot of amazing things even in small areas of your garden that feel uh, that they don't have much attention going on. So that is in essence how, um, how you can look at rooms as they all need floors and, and walls and windows and ceilings, but how that looks is up to you. And, and can you create a certain character of space and, and can you include all those lovely things that you are hoping to have in your garden? So that is a little bit of inspiration before we move on to the next section.